and on our magazine. What does a Canadian rock band have in common with some famous painters? Look and listen. Music by the Rio Statics, art by the Group of Seven, and how they interpret the Canadian identity. A full edition documentary, sketches on a rock landscape. The National, with Laurie Brown and Peter Mansbridge. Good evening. Biblical figure. Enough said and written about the Group of Seven to last us all a lifetime. But music inspired by it? With fresh eyes and ears and using the language it knows best, the rock band The Rio Statics has created new music from old paintings. Hold on to that for $2 admission into the gallery to come and see the Group of Seven. Unlikely tour mates for a rock band? These painters have plenty of road experience, and for the past year, the Group of Seven and the Rio Statics have been touring the country together. Maybe in the beginning, I didn't think there was, we had anything in common. A bunch of old guys going up in a boxcar, you know, portraying the country, but there's lots in common. Well, this story started almost three years ago when the National Gallery in Ottawa was putting together the largest traveling exhibition of the Group of Seven's work ever. The 75th anniversary for the Canadian painters was coming up and they wanted to do it up big. One way to do that was to commission a young popular rock band to write music inspired by the paintings. That's how the Reostatics ended up composing and then touring side by side with the paintings as they crossed the country in the Art for a Nation exhibition. As the Rio Statics played on stage, the paintings were projected on the back wall. Now, what do a bunch of dead painters and a young Canadian rock band have in common? Well, they're artists, they're Canadian, so they share geography. But in this country, when you share geography, you have a lot in common. But why this band for the Group of Seven project? An urban Toronto group with a sound like no one else, Dave Bedini, Martin Tielli, drummer Don Kerr and bassist Tim Vesely are a big part of a musical revolution that proved rock and roll in Canada doesn't have to sound like it came from somewhere else. And that's why the National Gallery called them. Joey pulled himself to his knee, pulled his body back up to the bank, and looked back down there. Together for 11 years, they've toured Canada, winter and summer, at least seven times. But it was this song they supplied for the film Whale Music that gave them their first real chart hit, Claire. Known for pushing a tired old musical form into positions no one knew existed, the Reostatics is building a reputation much like these revolutionary Canadian artists. They came together in 1920 as the Group of Seven. They left the established art world behind and set out to invent a national art and nurture an atmosphere of acceptance. believed that without faith in Canadian creativity, you couldn't have a Canada.
know the names. Harris, McDonnell, Lismer, Varley, Jackson, Carmichael, Johnston. Many different painters were associated with the collective over the years, and all of them owed a great deal to Tom Thompson. Thompson died before the group of seven gave themselves the name. He was their muse, their guide and interpreter. He brought them to Ontario's Algonquin Park. He'd only been painting for five years when he mysteriously drowned. It was Thompson who had the vision, who first caught the spirit of this brilliant new world. Seventy-five years later, as the National Gallery planned the Art for a Nation show, it was Joe Riley's job to find Canadian musicians to create fitting music for the exhibit. We wanted to come up with artists who could capture the same kind of sweep and scope as the Group of Seven did in, in their works. It was that quintessential Canadian nature of the Rio Statics that made them uh, come to mind at that point in time. Nothing beats you over the head Canadian, but just not afraid to put the subtleties of what Canada is into song. Um, in the same way that, 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 you know, I'm no art history major, but in the same way that the Group of Seven made statements about Canadian art, you know, this will be Canadian whether it's accepted anywhere else. This is our interpretation of our land, and the Rio Statics do that. They interpret their culture, their land, through their song, so they became uh, a perfect group to ask to be involved with this project. Over to the McMichael Gallery in Ontario. You like to look at the brush strokes, don't you? Yeah. What do you See how for? it's done. The Rheostatics revisit the pictures they remember from school trips long ago. It's working all right. Just got to kind of. Try pencil? And wherever they go, these guys are rock stars. This is going to seem even cheesier. Could you write one Whose pen is this? This is the kind of recognition of homegrown talent the group of seven dreamt about and worked for. They rule. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. you worked here long. It would have warmed the heart of J.E.H. McDonald to see that scene. The oldest member of the group, he started painting in Toronto early in this century in a country that borrowed its artistic expression from other places, thinking it had none of its own. McDonald was determined to change Canadian values, to make this country believe in itself and in its own artists. He found a way to do that with paint. Dave Bedini reasoned it could be expressed through music too. But still, the National Gallery project was uncharted territory for the band. I, I mean, I thought he might be kind of nervous about it at first, but there was not a hint. He was instantaneously, wow. This sounds really cool. This sounds really interesting. This is the kind of project we can really dive into. For the disc, music inspired by the group of seven, these rock stars have taken a back seat to the paintings. Leaving words behind, the album is almost entirely instrumental, a soundscape for landscapes. There's an affinity between the two groups of artists that makes the project feel more like a collaboration with the Group of Seven than a tribute. It definitely didn't have to sound like those New Age loon tapes you buy in those places <laughs> up north off the highway. You they put have them the on. display stands. Yeah, didn't, wasn't supposed to sound like that. It should, ha yeah, like it, it would, we wanted to give it kind of a rugged, ruggedness, I guess the ruggedness that they know from camping, writing, and painting in Algonquin Park. Sky's starting to bruise, eh? What? Sky's starting to oh, bruise. Yeah. That's what Gordowney says, bruising sky. That's good. They feel connected to this place. Lots of us do. Something in the Canadian temperament is seduced by this imposing wilderness. We don't feel lost in it. Instead, our landscape grounds us. 
This is where A.Y. Jackson was happiest. Traveling, painting, camping deep in the wilderness, almost always alone, he experienced this country in a way very few Canadians ever have. It was a hard life, and the more the Reostatics learned about the painter's dedication, the more they appreciated them. I don't want people to think that our, our thing with the Group of Seven is some sort of light little um, documentation about how, you know, how keen and Canadian they are. It's about how, like, vigilant they were in their work, and about how powerful and weird the land and how, how it can really change the way you look at the country, the way to look at your, you, you look at yourself, too. I think they put that down on their canvas and we put it into our songs. The Group of Seven was as much about ideas as it was about art. Lauren Harris, the initiator, was also the intellectual of the group. He continually spurred the painters on to higher goals, believing artists could change the country, and that there was a depth and a mysticism to this place that we needed to understand better. Harris went right to the edges of abstract art to try and bring that mysticism into focus. Seven found a way to work together, to share common goals, and revel in the individuality of each artist. The Rheostatics felt a rush of recognition when it discovered this quote by the group written in 1921. We have no group formula and are conscious of widely divergent aims. We have as little desire to be revolutionary as to be old-fashioned. We chose it because we we identify with that also. Like we're as interested in old music as, as new, and I don't think... I mean, it's always fun to, to think you're discovering something or presenting something in a new way, but that, that does not make quality, you know? That doesn't make good art. Oh, the shape of things that can't be seen the blue hysteria the hue of sin are as real as these things you deem Acceptance for Canadian art and music in this country in the 1920s was very tough. When we come back, we'll find out how the Group of Seven achieved what it set out to do. Statics have traveled this country end to end many times. Now they're on tour promoting their new record, Blue Hysteria. And for the first time in their careers, 
They have their own tour bus. They didn't seem to mind. They got a lot of nice fans there. Excellent time waster. Crazy. This is how the rheostat spend a lot of their time on the road. Smirnoff vodka. The vehicle has changed over the years, but the landscape hasn't. In 1987, we went across on our first tour in um, a small car towing a, a rented U-Haul with our equipment in the back and stuff. How did the wilderness or how did um, northern Ontario, those images first strike, strike me when we went up there in the car and like it? And they had lasting effects on our music, the stuff, music we wrote after we went on that first tour. So we kind of had to go back, reel back a little bit in our minds to and try to uh, 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 rethink the, the, the kind of power and the impact that uh, the country, the landscape had on our art and I guess us on people, uh, as people, as Canadians. Seven watched the country roll by, not from a car, but from a boxcar. Like any rock band up for punishment and adventure, they toured this country too, not only to paint, but to show the paintings. always welcome, but the group was determined that every Canadian, rural and urban, should have a chance to see the work. Every town held a tough new audience. They set out to portray something really concrete and did it in a, in a unique way. And there's nothing uh, deceptive about that or anything. It was a very pure intent, you know. And they were renegades too, they were rebels. It's kind of neat when you think back <clears throat> about their history that, you know, in their first couple exhibits, most contemporary critics and people in, in the city were up in arms, they didn't like it. And there was a, because it was too strong, there was this back, there was a reaction against it. The painter who took a great deal of the critics' anger was Fred Varley. The group's portrait artist, he was an outsider, a romantic plagued by personal problems. He proved the group's sensibility worked on people too. But in the highly conventional field of portraiture, Varley had few commissions and his work was often ignored. Frank Johnston was a great enthusiast when he first joined, but the tough criticism the group attracted soon scared him away. He was replaced by the young A.J. Casson. He was criticized for being too conventional. A much gentler artist than the rest, Casson did become known for his luminous canvases. Well, here we sit 75 years later, and people are still lashing out against the group of seven. They say they're artists that belong to another time, that they're not relevant anymore. Well, in Vancouver, the exhibit broke the daily, weekly, and monthly attendance records, and all across the country, it had a more than respectable turnout. But Canada is a very different place now, filled with very different people. 
people who rarely, if ever, see the kind of wilderness depicted in the paintings. So you could argue they can't connect to them the same way they could in the 1920s. Maybe the group of seven is dated. Geez, it seems pretty That's vital. True. It's irrelevant to me. I don't, it doesn't, whether it's dated or not, it doesn't matter. Who cares? <clears throat> Does it's, it feel dated good. to you at all? On our CD, we showed the picture of them sitting around the Arts and Letters Club, drinking whiskey, smoking cigars. Dated, maybe, but I let's bring back that <laughs> sort of time. <laughs> Seemed pretty neat to me, you know, a bunch of artists sitting around, getting drunk, talking about, you know, nice bre breaking suits. down barriers, you know, like changing things. I think that's not dated, that's vital. That's, that should be happen happening lots, you know. And it's neat that they're kind of standard bearers for that notion. <laughs> HMV store in Winnipeg. The rheostatics played to 34,000 people over the last two nights, but that doesn't make this crowd of 50 or so any less important to the band. They want everyone to hear their music. And for the first time in our musical history, we've got a big appetite for Canadian-made rock and roll. The musical landscape in this country is changing fast. Like the group of seven before them, the band finds itself hitting stride and leading a movement that's laying down a definable Canadian sound. The last 15 years in music in Canada has been a very similar kind of thing, with a lot of Canadian bands coming to terms with the, you know, being comfortable with writing about Canada and writing about where they come from. People aren't afraid about writing, putting their story in their song, having it based in Winnipeg or Kingston or Toronto. Yeah. And I think the Group of Seven, the, the, the new kind of success of, you know, going back to them, I think has a lot to do with that. An awakening of the consciousness of Canadian artists and Canadian music lovers. And, and uh, I think the two go hand in hand. It's a very strong time, I think, for, for Canadian alternative music and uh, Canadian art things. I think people are really into it now, aren't afraid to embrace it and uh, to love it and celebrate it for what it is. A Canadian style, if there is one, and I think there is one in music, is something that, that's inevitable. You can't, it's there. It's a very subtle thing. It exists, you can't change it. And I, I think if you're to become aware of it, it would become self-conscious and, and putrid. Arthur Lismer taught his students to paint beyond their self-consciousness. For Lismer, art wasn't a precious commodity you put a frame around. He told his students art was everywhere, and that Canadians were far more creative than our modesty let us admit. Franklin Carmichael was the silent one of the group. Like his character, his work was much softer and gentler than the rest. Not the traveler the others were, he never painted outside Ontario. Seven was ever in danger of folding under the criticism, it was in the first few years. Ten years later, the good reviews outnumbered the bad, at home and abroad, and other artists were painting this country in very similar ways. Emily Carr, Edwin Holgate, and Lemoyne Fitzgerald. The movement was certainly growing.
national identity and the Canadian sound are intellectual brainers the band feels no need to weigh in on. Somehow they're able to deal with these thorny ideas naturally in their music without angsting over them, and they're comfortable with their reputation as nationalists. It's not that hard to explain what we love about Canada, what people love about Canada. I think a lot of intellectuals, you know, and a lot of universities, people really struggle hard to establish the Canadian identity and what it means to be Canadian, but it's all around us, it's palpable. I don't think it's anything that's, it's not, you know, you don't have to, there's no great hidden formula that we haven't arrived on yet. You know, we, we love it, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to say that you love it and that it's a, you know, a great place to be and to travel in. And uh, I don't think it has to necessarily be any heavy, heavier than that. Even so, it's a subject the real statics can't shake. They return to the landscape again and again. From both ends of the century, the group of seven and the rheostatics have found answers here. It may seem dated, not particularly revolutionary, but for this country, it makes good art and good sense. Meanwhile in the forest, in a parliament of trees, the ink will crack and dry up but the compass will swing. We don't need mathematics and we don't need submarines to tell how far the land We don't need submarines to tell how far the land does go until it hits the shore. And mothers of the country take two flags and make a sail That's it for our magazine. I'm Lori Brown. Happy New Year. Stay with us when we come back, the National Almanac. about theater people have to get up there in the theater and do their lines every night in front of a full house totally quiet same deal kind of you know scary scary lonely <laughs> scary lonely quiet <laughs> yeah. if any countries have uh, favorite national painters we'll uh, we'll uh, travel there and write music about them <laughs> no we only do Canadian painters we do yeah Yeah. 